الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد. Fast in the month of Ramadan is one of the best deeds that you can do. It's one of the greatest deeds that we can do as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And taking advantage of the holy month of Ramadan is absolutely imperative for every Muslim to do. And not to be lazy during this holy time. Because this is a time when what? When the time is restricted. This is an act of ibadah, an act of worship, which is constrained by time. You only have Ramadan once a year. This opportunity to fast and get the same ajr that you will receive during Ramadan is only once a year. So it's not a time to be lazy and it's a time to strive to uh, take advantage of this great blessing. And one of the blessings of the Holy Month of Ramadan is that it is a time to have your sins forgiven. So, fasting Ramadan is a reason from amongst the reasons to have your sins expiated and your uh, evil deeds wiped out. So, if a person, if a Muslim, a believing Muslim, fasts the holy month of Ramadan, Believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having full certainty without any doubtfulness in the reward that he'll receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for doing it sincerely for his sake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him of the sins that he did uh, previously. And this is confirmed by the statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which was in Sahih Muslim fi Sahih an Abi Huraira an Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal salawatu khams wal jumu'atu ila al jumu'atu ila al jumu'ati wa ramadhan ila ramadhan mukaffarat ma baynuhunna idha jtanibu al kabair jiddin Beautiful. This hadith of the Prophet ﷺ verifies for us, as the Prophet ﷺ said, the five daily prayers. And praying the Friday prayer to the next Friday prayer, and Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan, to the next Ramadan, are expiations, are things that expiate what takes place between those times. As long as a person stays away from the major sins. This hadith has an abundance of fuaid, of of benefits. For one, it lets us know that between the five daily prayers, if a person stays away from the major sins, that the fact that they pray their five daily prayers, then they are having their sins, their minor sins, forgiven. Another great benefit we get from this hadith is between Friday the Friday prayer to the next Friday prayer is also an expiation of your sins meaning that all the sins that you do between Friday to the next Friday will be forgiven and this is muqayyid this is restricted as the Prophet ﷺ said as long as you stay away from the major sins as long as the person stays away from The major sins. So this Jumu'ah to Jumu'ah is also an expiation. And Ramadan to Ramadan is also an expiation as long as a person stays away from the major sins. Major sins, things like adultery. Major sins, things like drinking alcohol, uh, eating pork, doing the, those things which are prohibited and that are, there's mentioned a specific punishment to them. Or there's mention uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curses the person who does this. Or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cursed the person who, who did this particular sin. Those are some of the signs of major sins. So as long as we stay away from the major sins, then our Ramadan to the next Ramadan will be an expiation for the sins that we committed. And a last faida or benefit that we gain from this hadith is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned specifically... وَإِذَا اجْتَنِبُوا الْكَبَائِرِ He said, and if 
if the person stays away from the major sins. So it shows us that when the when the scholars they look at this, uh, the many different uh, uh, statements of the Prophet about the benefits of Ramadan and the benefits of some of these the the five daily prayers and so forth, that don't mention that the major sins uh, not being forgiven. This hadith actually confirms for us. We look to one text the explanation we gain from another text. So the Qur'an explains the Qur'an. One verse may be general and another verse may be more specific. And if we don't find the explanation in the Qur'an, we go to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And likewise with the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, we will find that sometimes one hadith might be general, but we'll find a more specific answer from another hadith or an explanation of that hadith in another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is the case. So here we find that as long as we stay away from the major sins, because the major sins, the way to have them forgiven is by making tawbah, by making repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also in another hadith of Abu, uh, narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, min sama Ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban gufira lahu ma taqadman min dhambi that the person who fasts the month of Ramadan with Iman, you know, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believing in the reward that he will receive and believing that Allah will, will grant him forgiveness and reward, then Allah will forgive him of his sins that he did prior to that, prior to Ramadan. And again, the first hadith we mentioned shows us that except the major sins. The major sins you have to repent from. Also in a hadith, Wazada Muslim, Woman Kama Laylatul Qadr, Iman wa Ihtisaban, Gufir Allahu Matakadam and Dambi. And also in uh, the narration that was uh, narrated or, or collected in Muslim, Sahih Muslim, that the Prophet Sallallahu said, Whoever whoever stands during the uh, the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, iman and wahtisaban, you know, seeking the reward of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and believing in it, believing that Allah, having certainty that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will reward him, then Allah will forgive him of his prior sins. So there we see that the importance of Ramadan, and we see the importance of trying to get Laylatul, Laylatul Qadr, trying to be of those people who are making the uh, the night prayer during the night of power to have uh, to have the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so those are some of the ways that we can have our sins forgiven and that is a big benefit of Ramadan a last important point that we want to mention here related to those to that hadith that we mentioned is that the sins that will be forgiven. There are two conditions related to that, related to that hadith, uh, the hadith that we they mentioned, that the hadith of uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, man sama Ramadan, iman wa ihtisaban, gufira luhu ma taqadamin min dhambi. The two conditions that we see that the scholars derive from this is for one, an yukun asa'im. Asa'im qad sama imanan billah ta'ala wa rida bi faridati sawm alayh So the first condition is that the person in order to get this forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that the the person who is fasting that they fast with pure faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah the almighty and they are pleased that Allah has made it an obligation upon them to fast. So they're, they're not fasting and being ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or fasting and being arrogant and saying, well, I have to do it. But rather, they have belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they look forward to fasting and they are pleased with this obligation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made upon them. The second condition that the scholars mention. And yukun siyamahu ihtisabin lithawabi wal ajr. 
فلا يتطرق إليه شك في هذا الثوب أو يكون هناك كراهة للصيام. So the second condition is that the fa- the fast, this person's fast, that they do it seeking and believing and with certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them reward and give them ajr. And that they don't have any doubt about this. That they're, they're going to see, receive reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that they love the fact that they are fasting, not that they hate, uh, they hate this act of worship, this great act of worship. So these things are some of the benefits the, the scholars derive from that particular hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we ask Allah the Almighty to forgive us and bless us to be of those who fast for His sake, and to be of those who sown ihtisaban wa imanan billahi taala. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.